Two weeks ago in Nashville, Tennessee, a group of ordinary citizens who love horses peacefully gathered to speak out publicly against the animal cruelty of the Big Lick Tennessee walking horse. Two people came to support them. One was Clay Harlan, whose family is synonymous with the Tennessee walking horse breed. The other was a former Big Lick Tennessee walking horse trainer, Carl Bledsoe. Carl is a second generation trainer. Both Carl and his father had Big Lick Tennessee walking horses. They won top ribbons at the annual Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. Carl Bledsoe worked with Big Lick walking horses all his life. At the age of 46, Carl was tired of the soaring and doing what he had to do to compete in the Big Lick world. So Carl quit, and then he decided to lift the veil of secrecy of how the Big Lick world operates. Here, Carl, while talking to a reporter from the Tennessean newspaper, answers questions about the tricks of the trade to create the sore Big Lick Tennessee walking horse. Carl, I need to ask you a couple of questions. They say this day and time that they cleaned it up. Have they cleaned it up? No. Why? Yeah, speak to that. You cannot produce that lick without a sore horse. Now, so, he may be compliant the day of the horse show, but he's had to be sore sometime prior to that show in close proximity to produce that lick. Now, the horses can be trained to be compliant. The USDA has a, a swapping initiative that they use, but everybody within the industry knows that the swabs will not be used to prosecute them because of uh, control of custody. Talk about sewing with Gojo, uh, WD-40. Oh, any mixture of that stuff. My, my favorite was kerosene and croton oil, and, and the horse would not respond to the digital palpation, but when you put the chain on him, after he took about five steps, it started really affecting him, and as the farther he went, the more it got to him. And, and that's one of the one of the things of choice here recently is crocodile. You don't have to use as much of it, and it's a little easier on the hair, on the horse's feet, and the texture of the skin. As a John, or John Hafter said last year at the at the Friends of the Sound Horse conference that you had. It's the only breed there is that everything they, the big lick is, is a response to pain. Yeah. And it's, it, and you think about it, everything about it is cool. It is. It'd be like you having a massive blister on your ankle and trying to wear an ankle, heavy ankle bracelet and walk around. And not only that, but then have some kind of ball in the bottom of your shoe that every time you stepped your heels on it, yeah. you know, and so you'd be prancing down yeah. the sidewalk. Well, that's the way they live. Carl, talk about the inspection. Talk about how they uh, numb these horses' feet to get through inspection. Oh, they use any number of things. Uh, benzocaine, lidocaine. Uh, had a pharmacist that lived close to me that, that, that made some stuff called Equicane, one of the local tax stores, sold for a while, but then they removed it. And what you do is you, you, you uh, soar the horse at home and get him to the optimum point of being ready for the horse show, and then you practice numbing him and you have to work out the time to where you can get the horse numb to where he'll go through inspection but where you can get him in in the inspection arena and him wake back up to where he'll respond to the chain 